All right, welcome back to another episode of Travel Ball Talk. I'm your host, Rich Prado, owner of Play in School. Today we're heading up to just a little bit outside of Chicago to meet with Jorge Acosta, um, owner, founder of the Midwest Hitmen. Although they're... Uh, Jorge, welcome to the show, man. How are you? Before I get into asking too many questions, how you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. No, I appreciate you having me on and, and looking forward to the chatting with you here for a little bit. Well, I, you know, and I, I started out by saying Midwest uh, hit men, but, I, but, you know, I was reading on your on your website, there was some sort of mergers and acquisitions uh, not too long ago. Maybe you'll tell us about that. Maybe you won't. I don't know how, how, yeah, su- no, absolutely. how super important uh, to the story that is. Um, but before, before we hit record, um, I want to go, I want to... Uh, I know this is called Travel Ball Talk, and we'll talk about Travel Ball. We'll talk about the Hitmen. But I'm super curious, and I told you, hey, let's not talk about it until we hit record. Um, your your background is from Panama, and before we hit record, you and I were comparing notes. My my parents are both Cuban. Your your parents are from Panama. It sounds like we had very similar upbringings as uh, as, as first generation Americans. Um, but you go back to Panama or you have family in Panama. And my question to you that I cut you off because I didn't want to have to ask you twice. Talk to me about um, baseball in Panama a little bit. What, what's your what's your knowledge of baseball in Panama? Do you have any connections down there? Um, what you know, what what do you hear? What do you see? Yeah, no. So uh, we actually got a lot of family that, um, you know, that has that used baseball to, to try to kind of get out of Panama and then play professionally, whether it's here in the United States or, um, you know, in, in overseas somewhere else, you know, I've had some, some cousins that have, that have gone, uh, you know, China, Japan playing, um, but obviously, obviously not at that part of the world, you know, as most people know, uh, you know, soccer is going to be the King, you know? And, and so, uh, but in, but after soccer, Panama is, is, the, is probably the second most popular sport, uh, you know, baseball is the second most popular sport in Panama. So, um, so yeah, big, big, huge baseball, um, you know, following there. It's obviously it, it, it's your, your, uh, stereotypical kind of Latin Dominican kind of set up in terms of, you know, you've been playing year round, you know, that, you know, it's, it's not, you know, some of the things that we have here in the States, you know, in terms of fields and facilities and, and access and that kind of stuff, you know, it just isn't, isn't the same. So, uh, you know, they make the most of it and, 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 you know, it is, it's, it's kind of your typical kind of Latin situation where, you know, they're grinding it out, trying to trying to get out of the country and, and, and make a little money and, and, and do something better for their for their themselves and their and their families and, and all that. So, um, yeah, so it, it's it's a, it's an obviously it's an awesome situation when you get a chance to go out there and, and see the kids play and how much just joy and excitement they are you know, having just going out and playing baseball all the time. You know, and, and so that's always kind of fun to see. Yeah, you know what? I think you nailed it. Like when you watch us, uh, especially at the younger age groups, man. Uh, you know, they see the Dominican kids or, or uh, some of the kids from other uh, Latin American countries. Man, they just they just play with such a flair, don't they? Just like they're having yeah. so much fun, so much fun. Well, listen, I don't want to I don't want to spend the whole show talking about uh, about that. I want to find out and, um, you know, I want to personally learn about some of your background as well as, yep. uh, as, as, you know, where did the Midwest Hitmen start and, and where are you guys going? So why don't you just take a few minutes to, you know, walk us back through your journey. Um, you know, you can, you can talk about your, your baseball background and then, and then where, where the Hitmen came from. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So I, so I grew up in, uh, in a town called Rock Falls. Illinois, um, so it's about two two and a half hours west of, of Chicago. Um, you know, it's basically about halfway between Chicago and Iowa. You know, so uh, grew up there. Uh, you know, small town. You know, high, high school, small high school. Um, you know, but it was you know very competitive, athletic driven kind of time. You know, where I was there, and, and you know a lot of success in, in a couple of different sports, which, which was always fun. And, and uh, it was just neat because you just kind of it was a situation where the whole town got behind, you know, the athletic department there. And then, you know, so we, you know, for basketball, you know, we were really, really good in basketball at that time. And, you know, there are times where we'd go to away games and have more more of our fans there than the home team, that kind of stuff. So it was a pretty cool time to kind of grow up there. Uh, played three sports, you know, for a few years. Uh, you know, played basketball and football as well. Um, ended up attending Augustana College uh, in Rock Island, Illinois. 
um, and, you know, played both basketball and baseball for my freshman year there before just playing baseball um, my final three years there. Uh, you know, had, had a good career. You know, we were a pretty successful team, you know, and a pretty competitive. I know we talked, you know, last week a little bit, you know, about, you know, Division three baseball and whatnot, uh, but very competitive you know, conference, you know, in, in the in the CCIW in terms of Division Three, and, uh, you know, you're running into, you know, Carthage College and North Central and Wesleyan, you know, on a regular basis. You know, it was it was a really, really competitive group and teams that were always in regionals and, and chances to get to a World Series. So um, it was fun. It was, it was fun to kind of get out and compete. And, um, you know, for me, you know, kind of my background, you know, so my brother played professionally uh, i have a number of, of cousins and, and family members and, and, and friends that have played uh, professionally um so i kind of had a um, pretty good idea in terms of like how some of that worked you know and unfortunately from my end you know so my brother when he got released so he was with the the expos at the time you know now the nationals um he was in high a ball um, i was with him like so my parents used to throw me on a greyhound bus in the summer you know at the end of the summer and hey go, and like i would go and just basically kind of be the bat boy for my brother's you know minor league team and i'd kind of live with him for two or three weeks and um you know it was awesome you know for me as you, as you can imagine a you know sixth seventh grader you know on, on a minor league bus and and you know just kind of living that life you know for a couple weeks it was amazing uh but unfortunately i was with them you know when when he when he got released so it was, that always kind of stuck with me of like hey this could end at any moment you know, and I I thought the world of him in terms of a player and whatnot, and thought that like, you know he's gonna make it, and and the fact that he didn't, it was one of those where it's like, hey, like so that that always kind of was always in my in the back of my mind moving forward of like have the bigger view, you know, ready to go, you know, because baseball's gonna end whether it's my decision or somebody else's decision, you know, it's gonna end at some point, and 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 then what, you know, what are you gonna do and and whatnot, and I obviously I loved baseball, I have a passion for it, so I knew I wanted to be involved. But if I didn't get a chance to continue playing. Um, you know, so I kind of saw it right in the walls, obviously, you know, once you get to college and kind of see things and started coaching in college. So I started coaching youth ball, um, you know, got helped out with some of the high schools there in the, in the area there uh, while still, you know, and, um, you know, attending, you know, Augustana and then started coaching at Augustana after I graduated, jumped on the staff right away, was there for seven years, continued working with some of the youth programs and youth in, in the high school programs in, in the Quad Cities. Um, you know, and, and also coaching basketball there as well. Um, but, but yeah, so it was just one of those where you kind of just loved it. It's in the blood, you know, kept it, kept it running. And, uh, you know, then family you know, brought me to the Chicago area, got engaged, got married. And, and my wife uh, was already kind of up in the, in the suburbs and then working. And uh, like I told her, it was easier for me to find baseball than for her to, to kind of pick up her, her job and, and move out to where I was at and, um, so moved up up this way and, um, you know, got in, involved with a couple of high schools here coaching. And then, uh, you know, also got involved with, you know, with, at the time, the 29ers baseball program uh, was run by Todd Lawler um, and, and, his, and some help with his, his brother, Scott Lawler. Um, so you know, if you're familiar with, you know, kind of the baseball circles, you know, uh, pretty good name to, to kind of know, you know, with the Lawlers. You know, at the time, Scott was, uh, you know, the associate uh, uh assistant head coach at, at Notre Dame, recruiting coordinator, um, uncle, you know, is, is one of the best pitching coaches, you know, around, you know, you know, with USA baseball and a couple of different colleges and, and whatnot. So uh, it was an awesome opportunity for me to kind of just kind of be on a fly on the wall with those guys and, and just kind of learn and listen and, and just try to take everything in and, and try to learn as much as I can about coaching and about, um, you know, bringing a team together and, and building kids up and, um, and then building, you know, just building confidence and, 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 and also obviously both the finer points of teaching and whatnot. And, um, you know, I just, that's something I always try to do is, is, is try to learn as much as I can, you know, anytime, you know, you sit down and watch a game, whether it's on TV or if I'm in a tournament and we're waiting for, you know, our, our game to kind of start and you just kind of poke around watching games and watching how coaches interact. And um, you just, it, it, it's, a, it's a copycat thing, man. Like you take this drill, you take, you know, Hey, you know what? I liked how they did that or how they said this and you try to take it all and, and, and kind of fit it to, to fit yourself and um you know so so yeah so we did that and then um after a couple of years end up taking over uh the, the program and and kind of uh, kept building it up a little bit and um added a few teams and, and just you know we had some really really good success and good runs with a, a few teams um and then i when i did take over 
I kind of dip back into my background out in the Quad Cities, you know, in Rock Island, Moline, um, you know, and, and so I had a lot of, you know, from my time there, you know, some, some former coaches, former players, and, and you know, the, and travel ball at that time, um, you know, wasn't real big in that area. It, it was that area still, and it still is pretty heavy in, in American Legion baseball, uh, but we still had kids in that area that, that, would, that were looking to play travel, and so it worked out where we were able to add, you know, some of those kids to the program, uh, they had a facility out there, so so they didn't have to drive, you know, two hours into the Chicago area to, to practice and and train. They could do all that out there. You know, a lot of times I would drive out there. I still do. You know, I'll drive out there. You know, a few times, um, you know, a month. Um, you know, to work with the kids, work with players. But then I kind of let our, our coaches out there do their thing. You know, throughout the course of the winter and our off season, and uh, it, it's been a good thing. And we kind of partnered at that time with one of the better programs in that area in terms of youth baseball. You know, the, the Quad City Hitmen. Um, which they, they start off at you know, at 7U with some kind of uh, kind of in-house kind of t-ball coach fist type stuff, and then obviously they, they kind of build up from there. Uh, but traditionally, in terms of you know 8U through 14U, they're usually one of the better programs um, you know in, in our area in the Midwest, and um, you know and, and so we've been able to have a great relationship with them. And then last year we decided just to kind of make it official and, and kind of change some things around and. Um, you know, and, and that, that kind of spurred the, the name change from 29ers to Hitman, and um, you know, kind of allows us now to kind of have a full program. You know, going from you know all the way up through to uh, 17, 18 U. Um, you know, so very excited. You know, as we're kind of working through that here this year, getting through the first year and working out some of the kinks with it, and um, you know, it, it'll be I think a really good thing for us in the long run to, to kind of have some stability there and. Um, have some kids that are just going to be be our kids from you know from, from you know seven eight nine years old, um, you know, and, and hopefully kind of help help them coach them up and you know teach them how to compete and you know give them a chance to get in front of you know other other really highly competitive teams and, and, and events and, and you know cause I think you can learn so much individually as a team, um, you know from competition from from adversity you know you know I you know I'm a very competitive guy but I always tell people too like. I'd rather go to a weekend and play really, really good teams, see the best players, best coaches, and walk out of a weekend one and three than go somewhere where, you know, we know we're going in and there's just not a lot of other good teams or players. And you walk out of there five, six, and oh, you know, with, with, the, with the T-shirt saying you, you won something. I don't know how much we learn about our kids in, in those weekends versus the weekends where, hey, we got four or five games. We really got to grind it out. You know, you got to play clean. You, you got to do things, the little things right. You got to be able to, you know, to, to, to compete at the plate when you got a guy on the mound that, that that's really you know pitching and, and, and getting after you. So for, sh- uh, for sure, so that's something that we're we're hoping to do. You know, and, and kind of instill that at a young age, and hopefully help those kids out as they get to high school and and then beyond if that's what they want to do. For sure. Hey, let's go. That was uh, th- thank you for that. That was a pretty pretty solid background on on your background and and sort of the uh, the combination of of you guys and and the twenty ers but I can't I can't go on without asking you. I can't believe your mom and dad just sent you on a uh, on a bus to go hang around with a bunch of pro baseball players. What were they thinking? Yeah, you know it, it, it's you know what I loved it. They loved me <laughs> apparently enough to do it. Holy cow! Uh, but Rick, t- times were different. You know, for sure at that point. You know, it, it was way. I mean, right now I <clears> I, I got <throat> I got four little ones. I got a three, five, seven, nine year old. You know, I don't know if I could set, put my my nine year old, and I could he'd probably be able to do it. He, he's smart enough, and on top of things, where yeah, here's here's where I get off, and I, you know, here's what I got to do. I, but I'm just, it literally I'm, was it, you. It was those days where you go on to Greyhound, and all right, hey, your bus leaves at this time. It's going to stop in these three cities. You're going to have a little layover. This is your time to go get <laughs> something to eat. Just make sure you're back on on this numbered bus. You know, we'd sit down, but yeah, and no was, internet. You know, that, could you that. imagine? No internet. No internet. Yeah, just got to figure no it out. You write down your time, instructions. No, no cell phone, you know. I, I didn't. I didn't have my first cell phone until I was in high school, you know. And that was back when, hey, all right, I got a, I got thirty minutes to get through my month before my min- minutes are out. Yeah, of course. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, it was one of those where it's just, you know, I say that now, and people are like kind of look at me. Yeah, you're right. It's kind of weird, but back then it was a little different. Then. Yeah, I mean, a little more trust in, and. But wait, so awesome. let's you forget know, about the we, ride out there. Let's talk about like a day in yeah. your life. Tell, tell me what. So give me like a, on game day. A home game yep. day. Uh, what time? What you know? What, what what time was the alarm clock going off? And, and was um, 
did your brother have an apartment by himself or with, was he with like seven other guys? Like how, what was that set up? Yeah, no. So, um, he usually had an apartment with uh, at least three or four other guys. Um, so I know the, the, when the last year there when he was, uh, released and then we were talking about that a little bit, uh, he was actually getting housed, uh, out in, it was the, the, the uh, Delmarva Shorebirds, uh, out in Southbury, Maryland. And, uh, so there was a guy there that, You're that, on that my way. three or four players. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. So we were we were there, and, and but the typical day, you know, was um, you know probably get up, you know, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, you know, grab some breakfast, you know, depending on what they had to do, if they had to go and and, and get a lift in, you know, or early work in, you know, depending on you know we might have to be you know somewhere you know by ten o'clock, you know, or noon, whatever it might have been. Um, so you get to the facility, you know, they, they you know, for me, just kind of hanging out in the clubhouse, you know, they'd get the work in, maybe I'd go hit or, you know, take some ground balls or something. If, if there's some downtime, just kind of hanging out, uh, you know, and then just kind of chilling with, with my brother and then, and then the players. And then, you know, even if it's a, you know, a night game or night, whatever time the game was, and, you know, they, for me, you know, try to stay out of the way, you know, like, so usually I, you know, at that point, you know, kind of be a little bat boy and kind of hang out and, and kind of help guys out. If I need to go grab them. You know, something on the clubhouse or in the game, or you know, uh, did you, you know, uh, break the bat or were whatever? You in, yeah. Were you in uniform? I go full uniform. Yeah, man. Outstanding. I, I got a few pictures there where I go full uniform, and uh, but it was again, it was you know his that last team, you know, and and, and so again, and, and name drop here a little bit. So my, you know, when they first got there that first year, so my brothers, you know, I, I want to say it had been um, so it had been his second or third year. Um, he, he was in, in, uh, Albany, Georgia, uh, with the Albany Polecats. And so we, we get down there for opening day as a family and he's, so we pull up and he's in the outfield playing catch with, you know, one of his teammates and dude's huge, just six, four, six, five, long limb, just looked like he was all arms and legs. And, and my brother was, I mean, he was, you know, 94 across from short. Like, so he can, you know, he had, he had a good arm, but this dude's making him look like a little leaguer. Oh. You know, as they're getting wider and wider, and all of a sudden they're foul pole to foul pole, whatever, and we're just I'm just, just blowing away, and and they you know they finish up and they come over you know to you know to the bleachers where me and my parents were kind of sitting and kind of say hi, it's Vlad Guerrero. Oh, that so mm. that was his first year in the U.S. and he was my brother's roommate, and so they were best friends. They're still best friends. Um, you know, so he's actually you know my nephew's godfather. Oh, wow. um, which is kind of cool. And, and so like, so even Vlad Jr. in the bit, like they're him and, and my nephew are, are the same age and, you know, grew up playing and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, but yeah, that, it was that, so that was to me, that, that was my view of like, Oh, like you had him, you had, you know, Jeremy Powell, Michael Barrett, Oogie Urbina, Orlando Cabrera, um, you know, Javier Vasquez, like all guys that my brother played with, you know, over a couple of years. I mean, at one point, I think it, it was, you know, there was like you know, one of the teams had like 18 of the 25 guys end up getting as big. Oh, wow. Um, you know, so, so it was awesome. You know, so for my end, again, at that time, you know, what I said, sixth, seventh grader, whatever, you don't really take it all in. But then as the years go on, like, oh my God. And then guys that he played against, you know, the, you know, Gabe Kapler, you know, obviously, you know, manager of the big leagues, like, you know, they went at it, you know, and it was with the, the Hagerstown team, you know, that they had there for, for years. And so it was, it was just cool to be around that and seeing, seeing, you know, what, what that was about. And, but yeah, it was, I was in full uniform. I'd be, you know, whether in, in, in the dugout or down in, you know, down the bullpen or whatever it might have been. And just, again, just trying to stay out of the way, uh, you know, but at the same time, you know, just very fortunate, you know, to, to have, you know, have that opportunity. Uh, even my, my my brother's manager, you know, for a couple of those years, you know, a guy named Doug Sisson, um, you, who, you know, kind of bounced around and, and um, you know, with the pro ball and, and college ball. Awesome guy. To this day, like, you know, I've ran into him, you know, or we talked and, and you know, he'll remember kind of who I was and, and remember Eddie and the toilet and all that kind of stuff. So, um, to me, that, that was always awesome, you know, to kind of see that relationship and, um, you know, it's a fraternity, man. And, and it's just, it's always this laugh when, when we're with my brother and, you know, we'll go somewhere and, and he'll run into some, who's that? Oh yeah, I played with him and, and whatever. I played in spring training or whatever it might have been. And, um, you know, and, and again, it, you know, with my brother being fluent in Spanish, like, you know, anytime, you know, all those guys would come around, you know, in the Chicago area and play you know, one of the Chicago teams, whatever, you know, we'd always try to go and then kind of meet up and hang out and, um, you know, it's allowed some pretty cool access. You know, I'll never forget the, 
you know, when the All-Star game was in Milwaukee at Miller Park, we got to, basically spent the week, you know, week up there with, with all those guys in, 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 the, in the team hotel and got a chance to kind of just be in the same room with all, you know, all the All-Stars, a bunch of Hall of Famers just kind of hanging out. It was, it was pretty nuts, um, but it was cool. But it was, you know, just an opportunity because uh, what he had and, and how hard he worked and um, kind of things kind of went from there. So that that's was, um, it was that's cool. fun. Cool. That's that's real fun. Um, I want to I want to bring us back to to sort of like modern day a little bit, um, and yeah, and, cool. and find out, you know, this this whole thing. Yeah, it it, it it's still a business at the end of the day, and you guys went through sort yep. of a merger. I'm yep. I'm wondering if there were uh, if there's any advice or lessons learned, um, f- you know, for some of our for some of our listeners out there who may be in a in a similar situation or maybe down the road might find themselves in a similar situation what do you you know can you talk about you know what what the lead up to to uh combining forces was you know was like yeah yeah i, you know, I, I think uh you know for me the biggest thing was um you know the, the chicago area right now is just uber uber competitive with, with travel baseball and travel sports in general travel baseball obviously that's you know what i'm in but you know whether it's the youth teams high school teams teams you know programs that, that run both but um you know there's teams just popping up every year um everywhere you know and, and um you know or, or programs you know combining forces you know there's some, some big programs here that, that have done some really good things over the last you know decade plus that are that are merging together and kind of joining you know some, some you know creating some superpower type type programs um, so it was one of those where as I sat back and looked at the program, like needed to make some changes to, to make sure that we, you know, stayed you know, uh, pretty firm with our foundation. And, and um, you know, and so that was the kind of lead up into it was, hey, you know, making sure that, um, you know, when you're competing against, you know, 50 different programs uh, for, for a couple of kids, like they can get kind of crazy and, and um, from my standpoint, I know when I got into it, I didn't get into it to make money. I didn't get into it, um, you know, to, to, to build some, you know, you know, giant kind of parallel travel program. I just, I love baseball. I love teaching it. You know, I love coaching it. I love being on the field, working with the guys. I love working in the cages and all that. And, um, that's why I started doing it. And so I, I hope that this change would allow me and my program, my coaches to be able to focus on that and, and not have to kind of going around chasing you know, 13 or 14 year olds kind of kissing their butt trying to, Hey, come play with us. Come do this. We can do that. Like, you know, so it was just more of, Hey, let's just get an establishment, you know, within the program, um, kids that, that we, we, we will we'll know, be able to know and we'll know their families, you know, we'll kind of know what we're getting, um, and be able to coach them up as best we can. And, and, you know, obviously we'll add some kids along the way, you know, but, uh, but it was just one of those where I just felt that was what was best for the program to be able to maintain, uh, the program, you know, maintain our teams and our numbers, um, to be able to be competitive, you know, at the highest level that we can be competitive at. I mean, like, so there's some some of the best programs in the nation here in, in our own backyard. So when you're going to you know, to places and you're competing against them, uh, you got to be able to to play. You got to be able to compete. And, um, and and so you know, being able to hopefully to kind of teach those kids that at, at a young age and, and then try to get involved with that and um, you know get them ready to go. And you know, that's what makes it fun. You know, so that was kind of the the you know the background of, of what you know, what we looked at the move. Um, the other part too, obviously it was, it was, it was a perfect situation because I personally was not looking to get into youth baseball. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I wanted to stay 15, 16, 17, 18. Um, the quad city hitmen were not looking to get into high school. They wanted to stick with their niche in terms of, you know, the seven year to the 14 year. So it was just a perfect situation where, all right, let's just combine forces. You guys continue doing what you do. I'll help you guys out as much as I can with whatever I can and vice versa uh, on, on my end on the high school side. You know, it kind of gives me, you know, kind of a, you know, a feeder system, if you will, heading into 15 U, and then also, you know, having them to kind of help me out, you know, on things that I might need, um, you know, and, and from a training standpoint, facility standpoint, because because they have a great facility out there that they're able to host, you know, um, you know tournaments and practices and, and both indoor, outdoor, all that kind of stuff. So it was a really good situation, just kind of overall, where we both kind of help each other out, and it really wasn't a negative on either side. Of, um, of 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 the of the coin, so I would say advice wise, if you get somebody in that scenario, is just kind of keeping keeping the big picture in mind and what's your end goal, you know. And, and um, you know, I, I see a lot of programs that they jump out and they do a really good job, and then they get too big too fast, and then all of a sudden, like it, it, they kind of 
I mean, you take four steps forward, now they're taking eight steps backwards to get back to where they were, um, you know, so, and just let things kind of work itself out, kind of, kind of, you know, naturally, if you will, and, um, and just kind of make sure you, you, whatever you're taking on, take on what you can handle, you know, because it, it could snowball on you. I've had years where, you know, we're, we're, you know, before we, we merged where we had eight or nine teams and, and it just felt like you're constantly swimming upstream with things that weren't, you know, they're important, but from my end, like I wanted to be baseball, you know, but there's a ton of administrative stuff, ton of behind the scenes stuff that just kind of took over. And, um, you know, so one of those where, you know, just want to make sure that, you know, you understand what you're getting into and understand the timing of things and, and you know, the, the energy that kind of goes into it. And, um, you know, it, I think it's one of those where people, oh, yeah, I'm going to coach baseball. I'm going to start a team. And then, you know, once I kind of get going, once you have a little success, like it, it can it can kind of blow up on you, which is good because mm-hmm. you're, you're doing something good. But at the same time, like it, it could be a lot. I got I got to imagine um, it's a big, big help to be teamed up with uh, a youth organization. I mean, obviously, you're not going to retain 100% of the players, but nor nor yep. maybe do you even want to. But uh, but not having to start with zero players every single year has got to be yeah. nice. It is. It is. I mean, it was, um, you know, about eight years ago, um, you know, I still have a, I bought it. I was like cleaning out. We were doing something in our house, cleaning out, and, and I found an old calendar. Um, and it was from one of our first years, um, you know, we had tryouts. It was like the third week of August for the following year. And, you know, and I was looking through the, you know, I had like my, my calendar or whatever, and we had 150 whatever kids for, and that was just obviously again, just for 15, 16, um, and 17, you know, um, you know, I can, I, if I did our first tryout now, third week of August, like we wouldn't have a program at the high school level because it's it just kind of sped up. And um, so, yeah, so knowing that, Hey, every year we at least have a foundation of, you know, 15 players, 18 players, 20 players, whatever it might be. Cause usually, you know, with the Hitman, they usually have two teams at each level. Um, you know, but like you said, we're not going to get them all, you know, some of them are, are, are you know, are going to leave for whatever reason. That's fine. I, I understand that. But at least I know going into every year, but, Hey, all right, we're going to need, you know, for sure, we're gonna need five players, six players, whatever it might be, and uh, and then obviously, if, if you know kids come out and try out, and and, and we like them and everything, regardless of what the numbers are, you're, you're gonna take those kids. So, yeah, it's been a big weight off my shoulders of knowing that you know you're not starting from scratch every year at 15. You, um, again, decade ago, you know, it wasn't you know everybody's kind of in the same boat, not as big of a deal. But now, when you got like said some of these programs that you know, have what, what we're trying to build in terms of kind of a youth program, you know, you know, they're, they got their kids already and they're bringing in new kids. Like you got to be able to kind of offset that in some way. So this, this will help us out. Yeah. That's, that's, that's pretty, uh, I, th- I think that's pretty beneficial, um, on a year to year basis to, to not have to start from scratch. Oh, yeah. Um, well, let me, um, let me jump. Let me jump forward a little bit. I, you know, I, I send I yeah. send everybody out some some standard questions, and I love, I, you know, it's like the same question, but so such diverse um, answers. And let's let's start with this one here. What uh what what book or movie or website or any other resource um, do you like that you would think that all coaches should be either reading or just learning from? Yeah. So um, from a coaching standpoint. Uh, again, like I mentioned before, my kids, three, five, seven, and nine, don't have a ton of time, you know, in, in terms of, you know, always kind of running around oh, and getting them to their stuff and my stuff. For sure. So from my end, I love the ABCA site and, and things that, that they throw out there because, um, you know, if I'm, you know, if I'm in, in the car, you know, this weekend we're, we're down in Indianapolis, so I'll probably, you know, jump in the car and for three hours probably jump on, on there on my phone and, and listen to, you know, you know, whatever, you know, watch whether it's instructional or, mm-hmm. um, you know, whatever it might be. I just love their, you know, what they put out there. And uh, that's my go-to. Like if I, Hey, you know what? I, I just need a new drill to kind of refresh what I'm doing you know, with my infielders. Like I'll jump on there and, and kind of search through and, and you just have so many awesome resources at the touch of your fingers. It's amazing. So that That is such a, sure. that is such a good resource. You are, um, you're the second recent guest, um, to mention it, 
Uh, but but before the two of y'all, no one else has has brought it up. But it's such a it's it's such a great once you once you become a member, you get access to so much. There's videos, yeah. there's podcasts, there's there's the 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 old presentations, and you can just you got them all. Log yeah. in, boom. Um, great great answer, great and really great yeah. reminder I, for people who are yeah. listening that have access but forget about it for some reason. And I just I think it's amazing because it, it, it's not just recent stuff, it's old stuff. And you get coaches that, you know, were at, whether it's a NAIA school or junior college, D2, whatever, with little to no resources compared to the big boys. Yeah. And and, and they're they're still churning out great teams, great players. But why? And then you see that. You see, hey, here's what we do with our pitchers. Here's what we do with hitters. And, and, um, and that's kind of where we're at, you know, because we don't have – you know, all the research. I don't have a multi-million dollar facility, you know, that, that, that our kids can, can sleep in, um, you know, and, and, and just constantly be in. So, you know, what can we do to kind of help them and teach them? And, and, and again, so that, that resource is, is huge. Um, I'm big on, um, you know, I, I love documentaries, sports docs, uh, military doc, you know, the documentaries. And um, so, the, you know, I, all the, the 30 for 30s and, um, you know, just kind of listening to, you know, I'm kind of a nerd from the standpoint of listening to like press conferences and um, and, and post game interviews of, of was it was it you know NBA coaches, college coaches, you know whatever it is because there's always a nugget somewhere. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh god, I love how you said that. You know, how he motivated the guys or or hey, they played bad today. I wonder what he's going to say. Like, I love. I'll, so I'll sit there. You, that, that, to me, yeah. that's the positive. That's the positive side of, of social media. Where, yeah. You know, you, you know, it, it, you'd be able to jump on there and search. You know, hey, you know, Nick Saban post game. You know, and 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 you're gonna you're gonna get something. Obviously, there's a lot of parts of social media I don't like, but to me, that's that's a really cool part of it where you can just sit there. If I got five ten minutes to, to kill, and you jump on you know, on Twitter or Instagram and kind of get through some of that. And um, so so that's that's where I'm at with, with some of that. I try to you know, just trying to fill in some of the spaces. You know, whether I got some time or if I'm gonna drive or something with. Um, you know, with, with a podcast or, uh, you know, motivational, you know, my, my wife's got, you know, kind of introduced me to, you know, the, the, the books on, on you know, on, on tape, you know, kind of podcast stuff. So meaning I'm kind of searching some of that a little bit and, and, you know, someone's just sitting there reading a book. So, you know, it's pretty cool too, from that standpoint. That's, uh, you are officially the first coach, uh, to specifically call out post game press conferences. So pretty good. <laughs> I it, 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 I'd like it. You, I love the it's the, the that fresh emotion where they don't got it they don't get a chance to to take a day at night to, to you know to watch the video whatever and get, it's like hey you know you're gonna get you're gonna get the raw emotion of hey you know we we played like crap and you know this is what we you know, this is what I saw and then you know okay well all right and then, and then you kind of come back a few days later and kind of see what what they're doing so I like that I mean it's just again you, you get some and and you know that some of those guys are just awesome you know uh, whether it's an entertainment standpoint of just kind of hey what are you going to say now or just giving you giving you the goods man in terms of like you know this guy this is, this is why we didn't play very good and um you know and it's just like especially football coaches that are kind of how detailed and how crazy they are and um you know it, that's awesome you know so you get some really good stuff yeah um before i ask the, the my next question which might be my last question because it usually opens sure. up a can of worms i, I do want to i'm on the website uh, your website. Yep. Uh, I, yep. You know, I should probably do a better job of doing this at the beginning of the show, but MidwestHitmen.com <laughs> is uh, yep. is the web is the website, and the Twitter is well, I had it uh, at Midwest Hitmen, maybe mm, no, at, uh, it was at uh, MW underscore Hitmen. That's it. I was just on it, and then I lo- lost it. Here's what I wanted to bring up on your homepage when you scroll down just a little bit. Uh, I see a, um, a logo that I recognize, um, Chicago Scouts Association. That's John Sarna. He was on yep. the he was on the podcast a couple of years back. Um, great guy. Can you describe to people? Um, first of all, if you don't know what uh, Chicago Scouts Association is, you can go back and listen to my podcast with John Sarna. That would be <laughs> at playinschool dot com slash Sarna. S A R N A, um, but for people who are listening right now, can you just describe what uh, the Chicago Scouts Association is and what your um, relationship to them uh, happens to be? Yeah, so the Chicago Scouts Association, you know, there's a number of programs. The original 
kind of I-94 league. Um, so there's about 10 or 11 programs, uh, uh, hitters baseball, uh, long shots, White Sox ace, athletic barn. Uh, you know, so I know at the time those pro player canes who are now GRB, Rays, Illinois. Um, you know, so just a number of uh, some of the, and if you're kind of around the travel scene, some of the better programs in the Midwest and on most years, some of the better programs nationally, you know, what they're doing, you know, in, in terms of tur- turning out players and teams, you know, to be able to go anywhere and, and compete with, with anybody. Um, so it, it's pretty nice to kind of have uh, that group of, of programs and teams. We've, we've grown a little bit here um, in the last few years. We've added another kind of division to, to the program, um, to, to the Scout Association. Um, so what we do, you know, in the summer and the fall, we have a, a couple of different showcases uh, that, that we will play that, that our teams kind of meet up, um, usually up in, in Kenosha uh, at uh, beautiful Charles Nash Park. Um, and we just got done with it with our 23s here this past weekend. And you go out, you just play two games Saturday, two games Sunday, and, and you're playing against, you know, some of the top programs and, and players and, and, and teams uh, in the Midwest or in the nation. So it's really good from our standpoint to in a – non-pressure you know, situation, if you will, you know, because it's not a tournament. You're not going to go out and play six, seven games. It's just, hey, you can line your pitching up, say, hey, you you two guys got game one, you guys got game two, whatever it might have been, and, and you just go out and you just kind of compete and, and, and you play. And a lot of times, you know, there's going to be a good number of, of, of scouts and uh, and college coaches out, um, you know, because there's going to be some good players on, on those fields over those weekends. So um, just very fortunate. We work together a lot as well outside of those, you know, we will just kind of call each other up and, Hey, you guys want to play, you know, doubleheader on this day, or you want to play whatever it might be. So it's a nice put to have that relationship as well, where again, just trying to get reps and, and you want to compete and you want to kind of change things up. And, and, and instead of inner squatting, you're, you're, you're playing, you know, against athletic bar or the long shots or whatever it might be. So um, we'll host, you know, the long shots do a great job uh, every fall where they'll host a, an uncommitted senior showcase. That's, that's free to our kids. You know that that you know they're able to go. You know, so it's not one of those where you got to go and pay 200 bucks. What I, it's just hey, if you're available on that on that Sunday, you know, here's here's the time you got to be there. Go do your thing, and, and again, usually you know a good turnout in terms of college coaches uh, to be able to go see some kids on the back end of, of their of their 17 u summer um, before we start fall ball up. You know, so a really good relationship there uh, from my end. You know, just got to be a part of the program. You know, and and actually run the program, running my program working with, with the other guys, you know, within the, uh, you know, within the, the Scout Association, work with, with, with John. He does an amazing job um, with organizing everything, getting everything going. Um, and then in the fall, a nice little, another benefit as well is, you know, the Scouts Association puts on a couple, uh, puts together a couple of teams, a kind of an all-star team, if you will, um, of upper-class, underclass, you know, kids. Uh, and they'll usually go, you know, so underclass kids this weekend are heading out to Arizona. You know, so I got a couple kids on that team that I'm excited to see how they go out and do and go play in a big, perfect game event out there. Um, and then we always have a team that goes down to Jupiter, um, goes out to the Colonels, you know, and invites uh, a memorial uh, tournament out in Cedar after this big one here in the Midwest uh, where, where they're going to attract, you know, usually 80 or 90 of the, the best teams, um, you know, both Midwest-wise. And now the last few years they've got teams from Hawaii coming out, from Texas, from from California, so it's been pretty cool to kind of um, you know, see that see that program or that that tournament kind of diversify a little bit. But the Scout Association, same thing; they'll, they'll send a team there, and, and then that team usually goes down to, to Jupiter here in October, it, um, you know, for the big WWAs. Is is uh, does the Scouts Association run a league for the for these teams during the summer? So like a midweek league that um, that doesn't you know interrupt or get in the way of the uh, the weekend stuff, or are they not doing that? Uh, we, we don't run anything through the league. Uh, you know, we'll have programs, you know, like I said, we, we'll work together, you know, where if we know, hey, we just want to play on Wednesday. Yeah. You know, all right, I'll get a field. I'll get a field. You get the umps, and we'll be there and play. So so that yeah. that is nice to have that, that relationship where, mm-hmm. you know, you're not sitting, you're not blasting out an email at 180 different, you know, programs. Yeah. Hey, we want to get a game on Wednesday. You could just send a, you know, a text to, you know, a handful of guys and say, hey, what do you guys got going on this week? But, uh, but it's usually just like, uh, you know, in the summer – it's one weekend um, of, of you know, a showcase weekend for each age group. And then we'll have, I think there's about four or five weekends here in the fall where they'll, they'll kind of mix the max age groups to, to kind of host uh, as well. So it's nice again, you, getting, get, getting games in the travel, you know, it kind of minimizes the travel. You're not in a mm-hmm. hotel for four nights. You're just, you know, it's just usually a, a one night thing or like we'll, we'll split our kids up sometimes 
Um, you know, so we'll just have one group come up on Saturday and then another group come up on, on, on Sunday. That way, you know, you just come up, play, and you stay out of a hotel for, for the fall for, for a weekend or two. So it, it's, it's, it's nice. It, it provides some nice balance to, to the scheduling. Well, I love, I love, love, love the idea of putting together an all-star team from a, from a state or region um, to yep. head to the bigger events because, I mean, the reality is, you know, if you're like – most of the time you don't have a full roster of guys of you know call it 25 guys who are going to go to this big 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 time event that are all going to benefit yep. so like why go through the trouble the expense i mean which is a big part of it in these days like to take 20, is, 25 yeah. guys worth of families on the road costs a lot of money so instead why don't we send our two guys that need to go to that event with yep. somebody else, and like he, 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 you know, Sarna and the and the um, the Scouts Association has the perfect platform for that. I love it. Um, I think that's so cool. Well, let me let me um, let me ask you this uh, one last question here, because um, sure. this this can open up a can of worms. You just never know what direction it's going to go. But if I handed you a uh, you know magic wand. What is one change yeah. do you think you could make to travel baseball that would have the biggest positive impact? Oh man, I only get one. Huh? Um, I would say, you know, for me, you know, the, the one thing that kind of sticks out is is the schedule. Um, in terms of, you know, I guess two two aspects of it. One during the summer, you know, as we're going, you know, I, and I understand like the big tournaments, but you got. 60, 70, 80 teams, and, and you're, you just, you know, the, the field space, that kind of stuff. But there's a lot, at least for us now, there's a lot of tournaments that are that are not in that. There's 20, 30 teams that are starting on a Wednesday. You're playing one game on Wednesday, one Thursday, one Friday, you know, and it, it, it's hard. Uh, one thing I loved when I first started, and, and again, even, maybe it's just because that's my background, I love having multi-sport kids. Mm-hmm. And when, when, you're, when you're playing – five days a week it's hard on those kids because they got football camp they got you know they got basketball you know uh you know summer leagues or whatever that they got now you're now you're making them choose you know i gotta i gotta give that up like to me that's not fair i don't like that you know i, I always tell kids i don't know what you're gonna look like when a kid comes to me at 15 and says hey i want to do this i'm like all right great let's just work but like i go I, I don't have a crystal ball to see what you look like when you're 17 like if you're five eight you know 120 pounds you might be five eight, hundred twenty pounds in three years, or you could be six four and whatever. Like, so who knows what we're, you know, where God's going to take you from that scenario? But um, but the schedule, I think, you know, so within the schedule there, I, I just wish you'd kind of get back to where, where you know it used to be more. Hey, we're you know you might start on a on a Thursday night and then you play Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You know, but you know, so something like that. Uh, but the, I think the other part of the schedule that that is. Just being able to kind of separate, you know, and we kind of talked about this last week with some of the tryout stuff of like, let people get done with the summer, you know, and then I wish there would be like a little dead period, if you will, you know, at the end of the summer, at the end, you know, maybe, the, maybe it's, you know, the first couple of weeks of August, uh, and then you kind of, if people play in the fall, I kind of, I know that's really, really difficult because of, you know, the, you know, depending on where you live, like you, you, you know, you, you're not you're not able to do that because of weather or, or like, you know, we got a lot, we got some kids that play Iowa baseball. Uh, on our end so like they're, they're playing their high school season in june and july um you know so so fall is huge for them uh, but yeah just having some kind of separation of there there's unfortunately there's programs now that like, they're having tryouts in june for the next year you know so you got kids who are playing two or three weekends with their current team and then already jumping in tryouts for the following year it's like you know it puts a lot of people in a tough spot and um but I, so that'd be one, and I'm gonna throw another one at you, Rich. And I you know you wanted one. No, it's all right. Let's go. Yeah. My big, big picture one. I wish that if I had, you kind of like stroke down on on the Major League Baseball that they would get more involved from a financial standpoint, hmm. and 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 help fund some of these some of these bigger events and, 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 or, or help build complexes and, and, and areas so that we don't have to travel seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 hours, you know, on a week to go, to go play good baseball because of, you know, there's just, you're, you're spread out, you know, and, and, and there's nothing you can do with that. But, you know, the financial piece of things is something that like it, you're asking, you know, families to, to pay whatever your fee is 
and then all of a sudden, you know, another five, six, seven, eight grand a summer for flights, driving, hotels. You know, you got you got the state of play stuff at certain certain events and all that. So like, you know, sort of from a financial piece, like if there was a way for you know the people who who has the most money in baseball and that's the, you know MLB owners and, and, and people involved, you know, if they got more involved with the travel world, if you will, to be able to, you know, help with that and and, and be able to bring that down, so we don't have to. You know, as, as, as program heads, you know, we're eliminating that aspect. You know, and, and you're eliminating, honestly, you're eliminating really good athletes that, you know, that fr- that frankly might might love to play baseball, but they can't afford, you know, all, all that goes into it. You know, and, and sometimes it's just it's a little cheaper to be able to go and, 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 and buy a, you know, a $40 basketball and go and go get after it, you know, and, and not have to do what, what we do in terms of, all right, you got to, you got to, rent cage space you got to rent you got to build you got to buy your equipment you got to like you said you, you got to drive down you know to to atlanta or fort myers or whatever for that weekend and then you know it's 189 bucks a night for a hotel whatever it might be so um so the financial piece of it i wish there was a way that you know it, there'd be a bigger entity on top to kind of help i think get big picture not gonna be all of it but like i said some of these some of these bigger events and and more heavily you know quote unquote scouted events where you're going to see the who's who's you, you would think since that's a direct benefit to those MLB programs to see those kids and scout those kids, and, and um, you know they, they would have a little bit more of a hands-on approach in that to kind of help make sure that those events are more accessible and uh, and run better. So, well, that's uh, my, my, here, my here, here's a couple things that kind of made my ears perk up a little bit. Is, uh, uh, on the one hand, you're talking about scheduling, and a lot of these events are that used to be Friday, Saturday, Sunday have creeped into. Now Thursday to Sunday, and then then it's Wednesday to Sunday, and, yeah. and then about five minutes later, you mentioned this phrase called "stay to play." I wonder if those two <laughs> topics are related at all. Huh. You think? What do you, you think th- that might have something to do with with everybody playing one game you, a day? You what know, do you think that days? they that they bring they bring in half yeah. the teams on Wednesday? They those people got to stay the night on uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So they're getting, yeah. you know, they're getting four nights of out of them, and then the other half comes in on Thursday. It, it's a, uh, um, yeah, that's that's one thing. Like, uh, I don't know. Some people have talked to me about the benefits of state of play, and I don't know. Um, the other thing I was thinking was um, the, um, you know, the if MLB could help subsidize some of the stuff. That'd be great, especially you know. Here's a here's a small for instance. Here's a small for instance. Um, you, your team pays a bunch of money to be in an event, right? Mm-hmm. And then so mom and dad uh, have already paid for their kid to play in the event, and yep. then and then when they get to the gate, they're asked to pay again. That. Yeah. That feels I don't know like listen I don't run a tournament so I don't I don't I don't know it just feels a little weird that you're charging mom and dad to pay yeah. to see their kid even though they've already paid to play in their in your event yeah. so like those are the for me those are the things that like that's yeah. low hanging fruit where where a little I'm bit of you. help and, and and you have in that same scenario you're also forcing that mom and dad to stay in the hotel that you designate that might be marked up you know, just because that way you get your little kickback. Right. I get it. It's a business. I understand all that, but I'm with you from the, like, again, like if it's, you know, like I said, if you're, if you're driving 11 hours to a tournament and you're, and, and you're, and it's 2,500 bucks to, to even play in the tournament, you're trying to tell me that you can't, Hey coach, here's, you know, each, each kid gets, you know, two, two passes for the weekend. So mom and dad don't have to, to pay. Like, come on. Like, you know, we actually, and, and you know, there's a tournament company that, 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 we stopped working with because they pulled one of our teams off a of field because of, of a gate fee situation where you know, they tried to charge, they tried to charge and um, they didn't try. They were, they were charging the, the, the program, the teams, a set gate fee for the weekend. And so I, I called the guy. I'm like, Hey, I'm not paying. I got, and I, and I was in St. Louis with another team. This was going on in Louisville. Oh gosh! And and so he so he he called like, hey, we're pulling your kids off. They're not going to be able to play until the gate fees pay. I'm like, all right. Well, here's the deal. As much as I hate it, I want you to go up in the stands, talk to my parents who are there watching their kid play. Because at that tournament, only like half our parents were there. So I go, you're so you're asking me to pay 
for people to not watch. Like, go charge the people who are sitting there and watching the game. I go, I don't like it, but I understand it. But we're not going to be charging, you know, you know, Joe Smith, who's, whose parents aren't even there because they're back home because you start on a Wednesday and they got to right. they got to work on Friday, like right, you know. So like, so that's that, that drove us. So we, I, I told that guy, hey, from that phone over, like we're never doing, and we haven't, and we've never done any of his events since. But to me, that's that's wrong. That's absolutely wrong. And I, and I get it. if you're going to get a nice minor league field, a college field, you got to offset costs. You got to hey, we got to charge somebody. Well, I get that. But like I said, they they try to pass that off onto the programs. Oh, well, just you know, have each family member you know pay you know twenty bucks <laughs> each, and and you collect it, and you can send me no. Did like, so did like, <laughs> did they not end up not playing at all that at that there. event? Like charge the ones that are there. No, so what happened was one of our parents that was there, oh my gosh was very upset and just basically ponied up the fee for the whole for the whole team and said hey just let the kids play yeah so you know because we were going back and forth with it and and um, you know and before I even had a chance to kind of do anything about because like I said I wasn't even there yeah. like it was, it was I was with uh, our younger group in, in St Louis and our older group was, was in in Louisville um, so before I even had a chance to kind of like figure it out get back on the field put your spikes back on parents just kind of hey let's just be done with it and it's it's silly it's dumb and um yeah 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 but it was just that to me that's like again like i it's wrong and i'm with you like all right if you want to if and i say you told the guy hey if that's what you want then put it in the entry fee like hey instead of you know 1200 bucks we're going to be 1400 bucks because you know what like but but stop trying to like nickel and dime us after we're already getting nickel dimed you know with you know, with, with hotel stuff, with, with gas stuff, you know, with, you know, you go, go some of these places and yeah. you can't bring a cooler in, you know, with, with water or Gatorade, you know, because you got to buy it. Yeah. You know, like it's a lot. I mean, it's, I, I get it. It's a business. Everybody's got to get theirs, but you know, yeah, at the end of sure. time, why are we there? You know, that's I yeah, man. Uh, I like, get it. That, that, you know, the if there was stuff. a way to bring MLB on board and help out a little bit, I think that wouldn't be a bad thing. I, I struggle, you know, I don't know where, where do you draw the line? Like, I don't know. Uh, but, but I think things like, things like that would be great. Yeah, no, I don't get, I don't, I don't think it could be fully, I don't think it could be a full thing, but again, I think there's certain events and we, you know, yeah. you go to the WWBA, you go to the you know, bullpen, run some big, you know, big, great events there in Indianapolis, there's a Creek Creekside, you know, some of these bigger ones that we know that the, the, the best teams, best players are going to be there that you know that scouts are going to be there like that's directly benefiting them you know so you you you'd, you'd hopefully you'd want to see those kids as much as possible because if you're going to invest in those kids and draft those kids mm-hmm. like obviously you, you're putting your homework in so why not make it a little more easier for you to do that you know and, and who knows maybe there's a diamond in the rough that, that, that you might see because you're watching a kid and all of a sudden yep. some random kid no one's ever heard of um, steps up and he's, and he's, and he's you know he's sitting 92 94 like hey this was this? uh this was great uh, jorge i appreciate you coming on with me um do you have any parting uh parting words No, I appreciate you. You know, have me on. Um, you know, great experience, and look forward to, to kind of staying in touch with you. And 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 uh, and now I'm going to add. You know, I already have. Uh, I'll be honest with you, since since we talked a little bit last week, you'll listen to a few other uh, of, of the podcasts, which has been awesome. You know, learn, learning you know a little bit from each one. So I'm kind of add go. that to my uh, to my list of, of of things to kind of listen to when I'm driving around. So I appreciate what you do. You know, and, do me uh, a favor. Don't we'll hang up. I'm going to stop the recording. And, don't and don't hang up. Forward. Sounds good.